Hi, right, how's it going? Hey, welcome to Big Dog Vlog. Um, today, I'm gonna uncover this Traeger grill. Okay, here's my uh, little Tex uh, Traeger grill. I uh, bought it here locally in Ventura County, California. Uh, got it on sale. Uh, got late in the season, so got a pretty good deal on it. Haven't used it in a few months, so it's pretty grimy. And uh, so, what we're going to show you today is a good way of uh, cleaning this that uh, I found that's pretty effective. Um, my uh, weapons of choice are some uh, shop rags, uh, a couple different types of uh, oven cleaner, um, some aluminum foil and some uh, gloves and of course shot pack okay so the first thing i like to do is take out the racks be careful of the uh, little temperature probe in there seems some people don't like to clean them they think it uh, seasons it more we'll see about this next thing is the heat deflector you can see there's a lot of uh, build up a lot of crustiness from uh, dripping and uh, we'll clean that off here in a minute okay and then uh, I like to take the heat deflector out this gets uh, pretty well used do anything with that right now and then uh, basically what we're gonna do is uh, vacuum out the inside here I like to get this uh, little fire pot really cleaned out well. Okay, there's not much more that's really needed at this point. What I'm looking to do is just get out all the big fragments and the dust, the uh, wood pellet dusts and uh, things like that. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the liquid oven cleaner, get on the cotton rag, just kind of gently clean that uh, temperature probe. Yeah, I'm not looking for perfection, I'm just looking to get Really nasty stuff off of it. Renting for the buildup. Not gonna get all, but I wanna break it. So, we'll get most of it. There you go. Hit it with a little bit of oven grill cleaner. Some of you may not wanna do it this way, but uh, I like to keep that temperature probe fairly clean, and that way uh, I get some accurate readings. I've seen some folks uh, take pieces of cardboard and shield them from the side. Um, I've tried that. I didn't really notice too much of a difference, um, so I've been just practicing keeping it uh, clean and uh, avoiding any unnecessary uh, wiggling of it, uh, you know, wire connections and things like that. And I just kind of give it a kind of a little wipe around the edges. Um, not looking to completely clean it because a little bit of seasoning might uh, be helpful. Okay, yeah, that's about it on the inside. I really don't uh, think I need to do too much more. 
Yeah, next thing I like to do is I just uh, kind of hit the tops of the uh, box. <laughs> Pretty. No other reason. It doesn't really affect the operation. Just nice to uh, chuck a clean control box hopper and the greasy one. Again, this is my preference. I like a nice clean hopper control box. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, vacuum out and empty the hopper of any uh, other pellets. These pellets will get uh, 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 too high of a moisture content to be effective uh, keeping the temperatures that you need. So um, if you don't have a Ziploc bag to keep your pellets sort of indoors or a, a airtight container, uh, get one, keep them in your garage, keep them indoors where the lowest humidity is. We live here about five miles from the beach and uh, if I don't change these on a regular basis, they tend to get uh, swollen up and uh, a lot of moisture. These don't look too bad. Um, not sure if you can see them there, but uh, you will sometimes see these things get uh, uh, enlarged with moisture uh, if you don't let them go. So anyway, good uh, mouse food. And, uh, throw them into the yard. Don't know if to make good fertilizer or not. But uh, they are supposed to be 100% natural, so why not give it a try here? After I've done that, uh, I think it's been uh, pretty well prepped for the next uh, set of pellets. Um, I don't really have an effective way of getting the pellets out of the, uh, the hopper uh, screw there. Um, so hopefully during the smoke setting, when you first turn on your uh, smoker, those will funnel through and only the best uh, pellets will come along after that. Um, I've never blown it out with air. I've never had to uh, get inside there to really clean them out. I just, I get the shot back from both ends and try to um, suck out as much dust as I can in impurities. And, and uh, so far it's been working pretty well. Okay, now we're ready to uh, get in the degree of things. Okay, the heat collector. Basically just get that thing nice uh, open off. You can get custom heat deflectors that aren't so warped to worry about the warping, it's really not a big deal. Just because it's straight doesn't mean it's uh, going to work better than one that's been in there a while. Yeah, I'm just looking at any cracks and the obvious damage. And uh, nothing's wrong with it. I'm just going to set that aside. Next thing I'm going to do is the drip tray. As you can see, it's got quite a few months of uh, drippings in it. It might be kind of tasty, but I'm not going to do it. So, I'm just going to peel that off, throw it away. Okay, so there's the drip tray. I'm just going to give it a good wiping down. I'm not going to use a wire brush or anything like that. I don't really need it. I'm just going to get the worst of it off. I'm not even going to use uh, any cleaner or anything like that. Just going to give it a good uh, wiping down. Check it out for any obvious damage. So there's nothing wrong with it. Any cracks, any uh, serious corrosion. Uh, I'm just going to put it back into service. Um, so what most people do is it's take some aluminum foil. I got some uh, uh, strong uh, extra wide for grills. So I'm just going to put it on a piece. 
close it up. Be nice chair. want to protect the, uh, actually you're not even protecting anything all you're doing is making it easier to clean next time so cover up any of the parts on it you don't want to clean that's it and you can set that aside okay next thing that uh, most people like to do is uh, clean the actual grates there's two of them. There's one that goes in the back for uh, any uh, vegetables or buns or anything you'd like to clean there. And then there's the main one. Uh, these come with some kind of a coating. I'm not sure if it's ceramic coating or some kind of a high heat paint coating. So I don't like to use a wire brush. Um, I don't even like to use a uh, plastic brush. Um, what I like to do is just hit it with a skim coat of oven cleaner. Now I'm using an old table that uh, I don't mind getting dirty. So before you do this, you might want to check with the, uh, the wife, the significant other, and uh, make sure you use a table that you can uh, really destroy. Okay, then I get some more of my shop towels. I just give it a good wipe. I'm not worried about any residue at all. I'm just hitting the big stuff. I'm getting all the big chunks off. And some people like the seasoning. Some people might even take a water hose to it. And I probably will. Okay, I'd say it's pretty good shape. I'm checking for any damage, any uh, significant uh, wear or anything like that. And there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Okay, get the top tray. Again, I'm just getting big chunks. Not looking for perfection. I, I also believe in a little bit of uh, seasoning that uh, maybe you shouldn't clean everything off. And don't worry about any oven, oven cleaner residue that might be left on there. It's gonna burn off, but uh, I will wash it off with a hose here. I'm just not gonna bother boring you with it. So there you go. That's the basics of uh, cleaning and prepping all the other parts uh, for reinstallation to the, uh, the grill. First goes back is a heat shield. There's really only one, well, maybe two ways of putting it in. These little notches here, just make sure they get onto these little brackets here and just sits right there. Okay, that's it. No need to cover this up with anything because uh, it, it doesn't get dripped on. You have the drip tray for that. Um, you can get custom ones that uh, don't warp as bad, but really that's kind of a preference thing. Um, it really doesn't change the uh, operation of it at all. So the next thing goes in is gonna be the drip tray. And the longer end of the little shelf goes toward the drain opening. Again, it goes in just like it came out. And then just make sure the foil is uh, placed on there well. Next thing I like to put in is the rear shelf. Being careful, again, of the temperature probe. There's these little feet that go back in there. Give it a wiggle. Looks good. Then the main grate, there really isn't a long way of putting this in. It just slides right in. And that's it. Uh, I didn't cover is the uh, drip can. 
I really don't clean that very often. Maybe I should. Uh, it's well hidden in my yard, and uh, I really, uh, really don't care. It's going to get dirty. Uh, these buckets are cheap. You can line them with uh, whatever you want. Uh, foil, Trigger sells some. Uh, this is a paint can from a hardware store. And uh, anyway, it does the jobs. Uh, dogs seem to like the lick trimming sometimes when they fall on the ground. And really all I do is just make sure that that uh, hole uh, is clear that's going to the drip can. And occasionally uh, just uh, whatever it takes to clean it out, clean it out. But it does not affect the cooking. Okay, for the outside, again, I live about five miles from the ocean, so this thing, even under the cover, sees a lot of moisture. So I'm not going to hose it down, I'm not going to introduce any additional moisture to this thing. I'm just going to give a good hit, with some spray on oven and grill cleaner, again, just to make it look pretty. Nobody wants another looking grill. If I knew how to speed up the video, I'd do it right now. I'll save you guys the time of watching me do this. You guys like watching me though, don't you? So there you go. A clean, ready to use trigger. Um, I've shown you just the basics. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to really need to do a deep clean, but uh, some of you may have done that. Uh, let me know how it worked out for you. Um, it's, uh, it's ready to go. Um, I did wash off with water uh, the grates, so there's no residue on those anymore. Um, I did check the exit for the drip pan, totally unclogged. Um, I like to look at the electrical, I look underneath, I look at any wires, loose wires, or, or uh, anything that might be a problem, uh, test run it, uh, everything looked fine. Hey Patch, what's going on man? And the first thing we're going to cook with it are fuck. GoPro stop. Go ahead, uh, leave it and uh, fuck. GoPro stop recording. My wife is going to say, I'm going to go back. Sit like that. GoPro. <laughs> okay, there you have it. A clean Trigger Grill ready for its next cook. The next cook's probably going to be some grilled smoked stuffed jalapenos. My lovely wife has got a great recipe. Expect that in the next uh, week or so. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section. If you'd like to subscribe, please do like this video and uh, let us know what you think. Until then, see you later, family and friends. Go for stuff. <laughs> Is that too goofy? Should I try it? Change it?